So I'd like to welcome everybody on Facebook today. We have an amazing show today. The show itself is called The Courage to Create Miracles in Your Life. This may be the most important show you listen to this year. It, um, it's a show that I've spent a lot of time thinking about. I've got the right guests here, uh, right in studio here with me, Nick uh, Lowry from the Kansas City Chiefs. He's a Kansas City Chief Hall of Famer. We can look at these guys in Facebook real quick. And um, so Nick's going to be talking about uh, subjects that are near and dear to all of us um, around uh, athletics, around sports, around uh, what's going on in the, uh, in the world of sports uh, with regard to uh, CTE. And, um, of course, Nick's going to share some great stories with us along the way. We also have coming up Marcy Shimoff. Marcy has uh, sold about 16 million books. She's a New York Times bestselling author. She'll be on the second segment. She'll be a call into this show. So stay tuned. We're going to have a show that I believe will change the way you think about life and be able to live life on uh, on life's terms in a much better way. Okay, Todd, let's rock it. Go. It's time to take a journey to find your courage, break through your limits, and master your destiny. It's time for Ken D. Foster's Voices of Courage. Ken brings you some of the most courageous people on the planet that will inspire greatness within you and change your life for the better. It's time to see the unseeable, know the unknowable, and do the impossible. It's time for Voices of Courage. And here's your host, Ken D. Foster. Well, hello, everybody. Today is an amazing day to change your life. Hey, listen, right now in this moment, you have the power to change your business and your life by tapping into higher realms of consciousness. Today, you can start on a journey that will lead you to freedom mentally, emotionally, and physically, and also spiritually by using the power of your mind. In fact, you can know the unknowable. You can see things that you've never seen before, see the unseeable, and do the impossible if you pay attention to what we're going to teach you today. So this is Ken D. Foster, your show host, and today's show is called The Courage to Create Miracles in Your Life. So how do we define a miracle? Well, I looked it up last night on the internet, and um, I got a couple definitions. One says, uh, it's a surprising and welcome event that is not explicable, explicable by natural or scientific laws and is therefore considered to be a work of a divine agency. And the second one said, it's an effect or an extraordinary event in the physical world that surpasses all human knowledge or natural powers and is ascribed to the supernatural. Well, listen, personally, I believe that uh, there are miracles around us every single day. I mean, I, uh, for, for me personally, when I wake out of, get out of bed in the morning, I think that's a miracle. <laughs> but on a serious note, you know, when I look around, I see, you know, snow falling. I see the sunrises or the sunsets are just, uh, absolutely phenomenal. Or I think about just for a moment, the, uh, the human body and how the body itself operates, how, we, how this thing, uh, actually works. Um, I, I do believe it's miraculous. And so I asked, Myself, and I've been thinking, contemplating this for a while. What goes into creating a miracle? Um, what's the ingredients that are in there? And, and here's what I came up with, and I'm sure I've left out some pieces, but I think this is food for thought for people to contemplate here. First of all, you have to have a human to observe it, right? Because if we're not here, there's, there's not going to be anybody to observe this thing. Second of all, you need energy to make this happen. There's energy floating around in the universe. You've got to have the energy. Next, you need to suspend judgment. I think, you know, if we're always in the critical mind, in the logical mind, we, we really need to open up to different possibilities that something different can happen to us. So we have to suspend judgment. And then I believe you have to place the right, you have to be in a place of the right frequency. Now, what is that? Well, that's as easy as being in a place of gratitude and or a place of unlimited, of possibility or in a place of wonder, or in a place that is past your, again, getting out of the mind. Um, I also believe that you probably have to have a place where you, there's something greater than yourself, um, guides, energy, God, whatever you want to call that, that that ingredient is has to be there 
for this to happen. And then the most important ingredient is this. You have to be open to realizing something that you haven't realized before. In her book, Dying to Be Me, My Journey from Cancer to Near-Death True Healing, author Anita Morjani was diagnosed with cancer throughout her body. Her organs were shutting down, and she had days or hours to live. It was February 2, 2006. That day, she died. She went into a coma, and then she went into higher states of consciousness and was bathed in what she described as unconditional love. And it was in this state that she realized why she had created the cancer in her body in the first place. It was her own fears that had eaten her body and eaten her life. And it's quite an amazing story how she recovered. Because when she got it, when she went to the light and she got why this happened to her, why she created this in her body. She came back down, and she knew her body was healed. And within five weeks after being terminal, she walked out of the, ha- out of the hospital cancer-free. Miracle? Well, or is it just something we can't explain, right? Is there a way for us to go into higher states of consciousness? I believe there is. You know, let's face it. Miracles are happening around us every every day. And I believe they're happening to tens of thousands of us. And I also believe that most people are not aware of anything that's really happening around them. You know, there are people here in this in this world that I saw a video uh guy by a guy by the name of Greg Braden. Yeah, uh, he was in um uh he was working with two Tibetan um, monks who had been meditators for, I think, 30, 40 years, and they put an ultra scan on a, um, uh, a person's gut that had uh, liver cancer, and you could actually watch in live time as these, as these monks sent energy to this person, the cancer shrinking in the body and, until it was completely gone, live video. I saw another video uh, not too long ago where a person was on Oprah and they uh, were immersed under water for, I think it was eight minutes at the time. And um, yeah, he set the record. Then my friend called me and I told, I told him about this. He was uh, a friend from China. And he says, Ken, we have a Shaolin master on TV that just was submerged in the water for two hours. He said, I'll send you the video. He sent me the video, and and I watched it. And I was like, wow, how has this happened, right? What is this? There's so much that we don't know, right? So miracles are happening around us all the time. Now, I believe this. Some of these miracles are unleashed on us like a car accident, okay, um, and where you all of a sudden everything goes in slow motion, and you see maybe where you need to move your body so it doesn't become crushed, I have a lot of stories of that. Um, some of them were given to us by grace, like Anita Morjani's story, where she went into the light and she healed and came back. And some are intentionally created. So whichever way they come, I believe they all have similar ingredients, and the outcome seems to be the same. Here's the outcome. Each person that seems to have one of these miracles take place in their life they're, they go from an unenlightened state to an enlightened state, meaning most of uh, what they have had to learn, they haven't learned for whatever reason. And this miracle will take them into a state or a state of consciousness that is above what they think is even possible. They will see something they've never seen. They will know something they've never known. And they will then apply. Most people apply because it's so powerful a movement in their life. They will apply what they learned in their life from there on out. So I love Anita Morjani's story because of this. How many of us are living in fears, right? A lot of people are living in fear. You know, fear of public speaking, fear of uh, going out and doing some adventures, I don't know, fear of uh, scuba diving, fear of um, uh, heights, fear of snakes, fear of, uh, you know, on and on it goes. 
But what if we suspended our beliefs in those fears for a moment? So today, when you have a few minutes, I want you to try this. Take a few de- deep breaths in. Release your tension for a second. Maybe quiet your thoughts and let go of anything that seems to be na- nagging you, right? Then this. Sense who you are without your current circumstances. Sense who you are without judgments of yourself and others. Sense who you are without your career or your family. Sense who you are without your body. Now, imagine you don't have thoughts. They're not yours. They're just passing by your consciousness. So sense who you are at the core of your being. Now, you're in a place to see the unseeable, to know the unknowable, and to do the impossible. Coming up in my next segment, I have a special guest, Nick Ortner, Hall of Famer with the Kansas City Chiefs. We're going to be talking about how the mind has been damaged by some athletes and what we can do about it. Oh, we might throw in a few uh, little pieces on what's happening with the playoffs, too. What the heck? All right, we'll be right back. We'll be back with more Voices of Courage with Ken D. Foster. Attention business owners. The feeling of being overwhelmed, stressed out, and facing difficult business challenges goes hand in hand with being an entrepreneur. But there are solutions, and it's time to explore the possibilities. You work hard as an entrepreneur. Give yourself the break you deserve. Ken D. Foster is the business coach for you. Ken has over 21 years of experience with leaders just like you who trust to share what is truly going on in their business and that thing called life. You're invited to set up a free conversation confidential consultation with Ken. His wisdom, guided methods, and unique strategies will bring you to new heights and breakthrough obstacles. Visit KenDFoster.com to set up your free confidential consultation. It's time to achieve your dreams because you deserve a successful business and a balanced, happy life. Sound great? Find out how to make this happen. Visit KenDFoster.com. That's KenDFoster.com. KenDFoster.com. Are you feeling stuck or in a holding pattern with your business or life and you're not doing the things you want or love? Then at some point, you're going to be faced with a decision. You'll either choose to keep living in your comfort zone and risk a life of mediocrity or increase your courage, step into your power, and forge into the unknown where everything new becomes possible. If you're truly ready to live masterfully, then you need Ken D. Foster's newest book, The Courage to Change Everything, Strategies and Wisdom to Transform Your Life One Day at a Time. This powerful but simple guide provides you with 365 days of life-transforming wisdom, profound questions, and action steps that will increase your strength and open the doors to success. Stop wondering why your business or life isn't working. The answers are available now. Imagine if you had more courage or another chance to start following your dreams. To pick up your copy of The Courage to Change Everything, visit thecouragetochangeeverything.com. That's thecouragetochangeeverything.com. We're back with Voices of Courage, and now your host, Ken D. Foster. We're back, and uh, today's show is being brought to you by Women's Wisdom, San Diego's premier networking and relationship building group for purpose-driven and soul-inspired female entrepreneurs. You can find them at womenswisdom.com. Also want to thank you for tuning in to Voices of Courage. If you're new to the show, we are a new type of radio. We're called Experience Radio, where we inspire our audience to engage with us in growing their businesses and transforming their lives. You can find us on the web at VoicesOfCourage.us or just ask Siri, Cortana, or Alexa to play Voices of Courage podcast. All righty. At the day I've been waiting for, I've been waiting for this day for many, uh, many months. You know, I guess uh, a couple months anyway. So in studio with me is Nick Lowry. And Nick is the Hall of Famer, the uh, all-star Kansas City uh, kicker who at the time he retired had the uh, – uh, most points of any kicker in the NFL, and uh, he's also the uh, recipient 
of the uh, uh, Brian uh, Weiser uh, White Award. He's also a five-time NFL Man of the Year. Nick Lowry is in studio with me. Nick, welcome. It's great to be here. I love your first segment. It um, Where we put our minds, our hearts, our souls, you know, that determines our experience. Well, you were just talking uh, uh, during the break about uh, uh, a game where it, where it was snowing and uh you know, it's it's like freezing on the field, and you know, and I was and I was saying, well, you know, and and, and you're under pressure, right? The game is. It, what game was that? I mean, you probably that was a few of those. Pittsburgh Steelers um, wild card game in 1994 in Arrowhead Stadium with Joe Montana as our quarterback and Marcus Allen as our running back and uh, Neil Smith and Derek Thomas and a, a host of great players with Marty Schottenheimer and we had an excellent team. But it was cold, and um, last Saturday, uh, one of the kickers I most admire, perhaps the most, uh, Adam Venetieri, in Arrowhead Stadium, missed a 23-yarder and an extra point, which is the most un-Adam Venetieri you've ever seen. And it just points to the, the fact that the biggest games, anything can happen, and you have to learn to live with yourself and accept that um, you will miss. The funny uh, counterintuitive part of that is when you accept that and just do what you know, sometimes you don't miss. That's interesting. So there's a, se- a sense of almost uh, surrender to – Yes. Yeah. So to being mortal, to being mm-hmm. – and, and letting what's your natural uh, spontaneous motion. So mm-hmm. think about that mm-hmm. with mm-hmm. anybody listening, whether it's the motion of throwing, of running – the motion of their emotion, mm-hmm. um, and and trusting that when you're in that flow, your best um, natural instincts take over, and the brain, uh, when it's not self-conscious, uh, does some things that are truly at times supernatural. Supernatural, almost miraculous. Yes, you know, I mean, I watch the games every week, and and I tell you, every single game there seems to be something that is whether it's a catch, a kick. Uh, a, a pass. Um, it's something seems otherworldly. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. I think training's better. Patrick Mahomes is a great example of that. He, he was just named by the Pro Football Writers yesterday as the MVP of the National Football League. And I played with Joe Montana. Joe Montana, I think, with Tom Brady, the two greatest Super Bowl quarterbacks of all time. But the greatest talent I've ever seen is Patrick Mahomes. He can do more things in more ways that defenses, defensive schemes can't really prepare for. And if he can keep his ego in check and keep being that spontaneous alert person, right? Um, he'll continue to be uh, a phenomenon. Well, you know, you you're in the uh, Kansas City Hall of Fame, Kansas City Chiefs Hall of Fame, and how, you know, how did you get there? I mean. Who is who is Nick? Who is this guy sitting across from me? Well, you know that that takes a lot to get there. Yeah, I don't want to. You know, that would take a long time. But I will say several things were very important. One was growing up with great parents and a sense um, of purpose in life. Always feeling that sense of purpose. Yeah. Uh, growing up next door, literally to Byron Wizard White, who you just mentioned, then winning the award. That's what you call the law of intention. That I would win the award named for him, the Supreme Court Justice who led the NFL in rushing twice in the three years that he played while he was going to Yale Law School. Wow. And um, that sense uh, gives you a sense of what you can achieve. And then most importantly than all of that is during the journey, being rejected and cut, humiliated, defeated 11 times by eight teams and beginning to transform the notion of my dream – and the fear that that dream would end because I actually was stepping into that dream in a daily way that made it a reality. So the fear and the pain was much more potentially real and realizing that no one could determine that no matter how many rejections but me and how I responded. So by the end of two years, I was able to beat out the greatest kicker in the history of the game, Jan Stenrud, who became the oh, yeah. first kicker in the Hall of Fame. And break all his records and actually break his team record for the longest field goal, set an NFL record, first game ever with two game, uh, two field goals of over 50 yards. And that was, those were my first field goals for the Chiefs. Wow. So it was almost as if 
all of those rejections, when I finally made it and the Chiefs had let go of this man who went on to play six more years and played better than he ever had, wasn't the end of his career. But um, it was really required that I go through all those rejections so I realized um, what I was made of. And sometimes we have to step into that room where there is fear and rejection to dig to those places deep in our soul and our capacity and our cellular, who knows what those storage cabinets are from thousands of generations perhaps that are in you that you can tap into if you give yourself the chance. So it's it's interesting because I interview a lot of business owners and um, you know very successful people and everybody kind of has the same story, right? It's uh, it's failing forward. It's being rejected time and time again and still showing back up. Where does that courage come from to keep showing back up? You know, it's, I, I, when I feel this emotion, it's just because I feel like whew, all these angels that have surrounded me have guided me. And that courage, you're tapping into something bigger than yourself. And that's where it's unending, it's infinite, and it only gets better. So that's what's so beautiful about it. And that's why I love the work I do, whether we'll talk about it hopefully yeah. later about helping oh. honor the the deaths of Mike Webster and Junior Seo and Kenny Stabler and others, but also just working with the homeless people that have been told that they have no value and seeing the value that they see in themselves transformed in a matter of minutes yeah. just because somebody's taking the time to look them in the eye mm -hmm. and channel that supernatural love that all of us have access to. Well, I have a belief that uh, the homeless people that you're working with and the President of the United States are equal. There's no difference between them. Thank you. You know, they, we're all human. We're all people. We all deserve to be respected and loved and cared for and nurtured in this world. So um, yes. let's get into, uh, you know, your, your good friend, you know, uh, Kwame Lasseter yes. uh, just passed away. Um, he was eight years with the Cardinals, a mm -hmm. couple of years with San Diego. And um, let's talk about that because yep. I know this is, uh, you know, I'm, I'm probably going to make you cry, Nick. It's okay. <laughs> but, you know, he was uh, with me on, on Christmas Day. We do Champions for the Homeless at St. Vincent de Paul's in, in Phoenix five times a year. It keeps growing. We've grown from 15 volunteers to 500. All these people say the same thing, that they knew they were missing something in their lives, and this taps into that. They knew that Christmas and Easter and particularly Thanksgiving felt kind of empty when it was just about eating turkey and watching football. And here is their chance to manifest gratitude, to leave their comfort zone and leave their bodies, if you will, to connect with people that have had so much hopelessness, so much degradation and see that you, they have power, no matter all of us, no matter what, have power to help others. Mm -hmm. That sounds like a cliche. So if it's put into action, though, where it's a person sitting across the table mm -hmm. and you see all of these layers and these scales literally disappear, right. what's the value of that? We right. can't measure it, but, but then again, it's more real than anything. It stays with me. So I just encourage all the people, particularly the children of the professional athletes that come and the musicians and all the people from all walks of life, just to, to tap into that. When their children have that experience of having power to, to inspire and help somebody else at the age of five and six, they will crave that. They will right. crave that like an addiction, right. but it's the best addiction, and it's permanent, and it's a foul cabinet in your being that will only grow with wisdom, with empathy, the more you tap into it. It I never stops. Well, listen, i got to take a break. Um, when we come back, though, I want to talk to you about uh, uh, some of the causes that uh, Junior Seau, Mike Webster, um, some of the uh, all-stars that, uh, that have fallen, um, some of the causes of why maybe they've fallen and what you're involved with. So, Thank you. We're going to do that in a second. All right, we'll be right back. We'll be back with more Voices of Courage with Ken D. Foster. Would you like to help someone in need to move from poverty to prosperity? Stars of Courage, a 501c3 nonprofit, is looking for established life coaches with experience in education and career mentorship to build confidence and create clear paths to success. Join our team of experienced coaches in a wide variety of fields, equipped with warm hearts with a passion for lifting up those in need. Our Stars of Courage. Find out how you can make a difference at Stars starsofcourage.org. That's starsofcourage.org. 
Are you feeling stuck or in a holding pattern with your business or life and you're not doing the things you want or love? Then at some point, you're going to be faced with a decision. You'll either choose to keep living in your comfort zone and risk a life of mediocrity or increase your courage, step into your power and forge into the unknown where everything new becomes possible. If you're truly ready to live masterfully, then you need Ken D. Foster's newest book, The Courage to Change Everything, Strategies and Wisdom to Transform Your Life One Day at a Time. This powerful but simple guide provides you with 365 days of life-transforming wisdom, profound questions, and action steps that will increase your strength and open the doors to success. Stop wondering why your business or life isn't working. The answers are available now. Imagine if you had more courage or another chance to start following your dreams. To pick up your copy of The Courage to Change Everything, visit thecouragetochangeeverything.com. That's thecouragetochangeeverything.com. We're back with Voices of Courage with Ken D. Foster. Learn more about Ken, how to be a guest on the show, and sponsorship opportunities by visiting VoicesOfCourage.us. And now your host, Ken D. Foster. Whatever it takes, I love the All righty. Hey, we're back. Uh, today's show is The Courage to Create Miracles in Your Life. And I truly want to thank everybody, first of all, for tuning into this show and all other shows. I appreciate your p- feedback about the shows. And, you, of course, you can find us on Facebook and Voices of Courage. Dot us and you can become a scriber there also and get uh, some of our information about our upcoming guests and our uh, sponsors and some of our, our um, uh, information that will help you change your life and change who you are. So in studio with me today is Nick Lowry, and Nick is the uh, Kansas City Chief among other teams that he played with, but he is a Hall of Famer for Kansas City. And we're talking about right now his uh, nonprofit, um, which uh, I know that they can go to nicklowry.org to find out more about. N-I-C-K-L-O-W-E-R-Y dot org. Oh, let's do that again. N-I-C-K-L-O-W-E-R-Y dot org. Okay. And Tell me about the nonprofit, Nick. And, so it's and a Richard. 501c3, and, and our, our most popular program is Champions for the Homeless. We focus in particular on homeless veterans. I mean, we could do a whole show, or if not 10 shows, okay. on 22 suicides a day and where that comes from. But it's all connected to the sense when somebody feels there's something to live for, especially when it's beyond themselves, uh, whether it's cancer or whether it's a cancerous attitude that leads to suicide, those things m- disappear. And uh, that's led me to this interesting, speaking of law of attraction, um, connection with uh, looking at CBDs and this new law and this new era, the end of cannabinoids as a prohibited substance, particularly hemp, but in general – the miraculous uh, potential for CBDs as neuroprotectants, neuroprotectant, uh, as Julius Axelrod, the Nobel Prize winner, uh, had uh, patented in what's called patent number 507 of the U.S. government. And we are so close to developing a um, intercellular helmet that protects mm. the brain so that a Kwame Lassiter, who had not only a l- enlarged heart but had the early symptoms of dementia, and Mike Webster, who torturously is profiled by Dr. Bennett Amalu and the movie Concussion, or our friend Junior Seau, who shot himself in the chest and uh, played with in, in two game-winning um, Super uh, Pro Bowls. All of those people that were some of the most uh, upbeat, energetic, selfless human beings you will ever meet in your life, and courageous, speaking of courage, most courageous people ever that work through daily pain to serve their team and their their teammates, and we've got to do something to honor them. Wow. Well, you know, uh, when you uh, and I first connected, we talked about CTE. We talked about um, how that is impacting um, the lives of so many and has impacted, and you know, and some of the laws that are changing. Um, uh, I, you know, even on our high school uh, football uh, fields. But um, what do you think the, uh, you know, when you're talking about the, can- uh, uh, the um, cannabis, uh, what is it? The cannabinoids. Cannabinoids. I'm still. Uh, Derived farming. from cannabis. Yeah. This is uh, what we call biomimetics uh, right. on the pharma side with Canalife. Uh, KLS 13019 is from a phyto uh, derived from plants, but it's a, phy- a phyto company that's looking at uh, derivatives that, um, 
have the best of what cannabinoids can do to restore the regulatory or homeostasis of the body, mm. which and is part include, of rebalancing. Does that, yeah. does that include the brain? It absolutely does. Mm-hmm. In fact, the Salk Institute and UCLA Torrance, Stanford, they've all had multiple studies that show mm-hmm. that the neurons themselves literally can withstand and retain their identity, retain their resilience, which in, is kind of what we're talking about. It As is. human beings, we're trying to find our identity and uh, restore that sense of resiliency to any impact from the outside such that we preserve our purpose and do good things. Well, you know, uh, a couple of years ago, I uh, had a ski accident and I tore my ACL, my MCL, a medial meniscus, and I had a bone fracture, right? And I went in and got a uh, MRI um, and the doctor said, you know, you're going to have to have surgery. This thing is, uh, it's all torn up, right? And I said, what's the chance? He says, well, you got a, uh, a 30% chance or 70% chance that you have to have surgery. And I said, well, medically disconnected the brain from the pain and it was able to heal. I have no idea what it is. I know it was developed by an orthopedic surgeon, but she's touching my back and I'm healing. So there's a lot of alternative things that are going on out there, You know, one of which I healed. By the way, um, I didn't have surgery and I had, um, uh, I'm out skiing and doing everything I need to do again, right? Wow. But... Um, uh, you know, I think the uh, cannabinoids, right, <laughs> are part of that. Is that uh, is that right? Yeah, there. Stanford University found that there are what are called CB1 and CB2 receptors. The CB1 receptors in every single mammal, ten times as many, by the way, in dogs. Wow. Um, that the CB1s are for neural receptors throughout the brain stem, the brain itself. And they are hungry, literally, for cannabis. They literally evolved over thousands of generations where the body naturally had that in its food supply. And in 1937, when the prohibition started for cannabis, um, unfortunately, that was cut out of the food supply, or the ready food supply for poultry, for cattle, etc. So not only was it not available for humans, but even in the food that we Eight, it was no longer part of the diet, which was another way for humans to get it. Now that we're getting it back and understanding this, we, I have witnessed so many, speaking of miracles, close to miracles. Yeah. And when you started in your first segment talking about what we don't know, right? this is something we are beginning to know, and it's really helping us map the brain. So I'm so excited because we're going to find out with the Salk Institute, with Temple University and Candle Life Sciences, Dr. Doug Brenneman and Dr. Bill Kenny and Dean Petconis, uh, we have this chance to really turn around this generation uh, that has seen 30, 35% of the kids go out of youth football because their parents don't know what the risk is because their brains can't handle and they're developing brains with developing skeletal structure to protect their their necks and their heads. Right. So now we have a chance to, to solve that and kids can then learn what is Hard to learn any other way or, or more effectively than th- through sport, those lessons of courage and, and character. It, it, and it does build courage and it does build character. And I'm wondering if you were, you know, if you're, if you're a, a dad right now and you're thinking about putting your children into sports, what's your advice for them right now, Nick? Well, I would say, first of all, that um, there are some flag football leagues that help teach tackling techniques by grabbing things on the back that make you tackle head up and do that till 14 at least because uh, a number of great players in the NFL didn't play till they were in sophomore and junior year. Wow. And so wait till high school and learn the other skills like Drew Brees did right. before high school. Right. Talk to me about Kenna Life a uh, little bit. What? What's? Uh, I know you're involved in that. Well, we have – Very uh, truly veteran scientists that are looking at these uh, patented molecules, the only patented molecules for the commercial application for CTE and for opioid addiction, which is part of this behavioral uh, dark passage that Mike Webster went through. Not only that he had CTE, but then you, you give them hydrocodone and these opiates, which literally addict the brain to more addictive tendencies. Mm. And what we're seeing is the potential that CBDs switch off that addictive response. Really? How can we make truly objective decisions of what's good for us if every signal in our cellular brain is, I have to have this. I must have this now. And the ability to switch that off makes a huge difference. So we're very excited. Now we have to go into the human trials over the next two years and and create what we'd like to call an intercellular helmet Mm -hmm. for the brain Mm -hmm. that literally will make the brain five times more resilient to impact. Wow. Okay, so they can find out more about uh, Kenna Life at uh, Ken, it's K 
A N N A L I F E dot com. Canalife dot com. Canalife dot com. K A N N A Life dot com. Okay. Gosh, we're almost out of time. I, I really this is way too short. Um so I guess let me let me just uh, ask you one final question, Nick. Um At your core, the core of Nick, who is this guy? Well, this guy is the product of wonderful parents uh, and the very clear uh, conviction that everything I do to help others will help my, my own purpose in life, that death itself and life are part of a continuum, and to not let the fear of that, actually to let the reality of that when you look at the loss of a Kwame Lasseter or Mike Webster, inspire one to really do the things that I love the most, that I'm gifted to do because of God's unique gifts in me, the way you have a unique, you, many unique gifts. Tap into those and live a life of a purpose that really is bigger than you. When you do that, you, you constantly reaffirm this soulful cabinet, file cabinet in your, in your mind and body and soul that can never stop, always grows and always gets bigger and better. Wow. Okay. Nick, thank you so much for joining me today. I really appreciate it. I hope you come back and do this you with bet. me a few more times. This uh, I, We just barely scratched the surface here. You can find out a lot more about Nick at nicklowry.org. Nick Lowry, N-I-C-K-L-O-W-E-R-Y. Like bad boys, Mike Lowry. Like Nick Lowry. Lowry. That's what Boomer Sarsi used to call him. All right. Okay, we'll be uh, right back. We've got uh, New York Times bestselling author coming, uh, joining us. Sold about 16 million books. There's a reason for that. Find out why. We'll be right back. We'll be back with more Voices of Courage with Ken D. Foster. Attention business owners. The feeling of being overwhelmed, stressed out, and facing difficult business challenges goes hand in hand with being an entrepreneur. But there are solutions, and it's time to explore the possibilities. You work hard as an entrepreneur. Give yourself the break you deserve. Ken D. Foster is the business coach for you. Ken has over 21 years of experience with leaders just like you who trust to share what is truly going on in their business and that thing called life. You're invited to set up a free conversation confidential consultation with Ken. His wisdom, guided methods, and unique strategies will bring you to new heights and breakthrough obstacles. Visit KenDFoster.com to set up your free confidential consultation. It's time to achieve your dreams because you deserve a successful business and a balanced, happy life. Sound great? Find out how to make this happen. Visit KenDFoster.com. That's KenDFoster.com. KenDFoster.com. We're back with Voices of Courage with Ken D. Foster. Learn more about Ken, how to be a guest on the show, and sponsorship opportunities by visiting VoicesOfCourage.us. And now your host, Ken D. Foster. Well, I'd like to welcome you back. What a show. What what an amazing show we have going here today. So I want to let you know we're being brought to you by Women's Wisdom, San Diego's premier networking and relationship group for purpose-driven and soul-inspired female entrepreneurs. And I want to mention one other sponsor. As a business owner, your online presence, of course, is more important than ever. You know, people are going to look you up online before they ever pick up the phone. That's why the right image of yourself and branding of your business is vital. I've come across one of the best photographers in the nation. Her name is Ann Landstrom, and her company is AnnPhotography.com. I recommend you give her a call. She promises to give you images that will bring out the best in you and your business. That's AnnPhotography.com. Wow. What a show. Right now, online with me is... Marcy Shimoff. And Marcy is the New York Times bestselling author. She's a renowned transformational teacher and an expert on happiness, success, and unconditional love. Marcy's books include the runaway bestseller, Happy for No Reason, Love for No Reason, and six titles in the phenomenally successful Chicken Soup for the Women's Soul series. Her books have sold more than 16 million copies worldwide in 33 languages and have topped all the major best-selling lists, including New York Times. Marcy is currently, she co-leads a worldwide program called Your Year of Miracles. 
with thousands of participants in 42 countries for living a life of miracles. Marcy has inspired millions of people around the world, and she's also inspired me on a continuous basis. Marcy, I'm so glad to have you. Welcome to our show. So great to be here with you, Ken. I love this. I always love an opportunity to get to talk with you and and share anything we can with with everyone listening. Well, you and I uh, have some rich history. We were in a in a mastermind group together for a while that uh, included our our friends John Asraf and Debbie Ford and Ariel Ford and Greg Scott Reed. Uh, that that's where I really got to kind of got to know you a little bit. Um, you know, you spent your life speaking about happiness, and now you've taken up a uh, you've taken it up a notch, and you're teaching people how to live a life filled with miracles. So can you share a little bit about your story, a little bit how this all began? Yeah, it, it, this story is um, the story of my own life. I mean, you know, there's the saying, we teach what we most lo- want to learn. And I uh, was born depressed. I was an unhappy camper coming coming into this world. I, I say I had existential angst coming out of the womb. <laughs> and I just was unhappy throughout my life. And I did what a lot of people do. I set goals for myself and I thought once I have those goals that's it I'll have everything I need to be happy and um, I'll just tell you the goals because they're kind of fun I thought I wanted um, to have a great career helping people to have a wonderful husband or life partner comfortable home uh, fabulous friends and the equivalent of Halle Berry's body (laughs) (laughs) of course and I figured okay if I get all five of those that's it I'll have it made and I got four out of the five. I don't have Halle Berry's body, <laughs> but I have a healthy body. And I, I worked really hard, as most people do. I got all the things I thought I needed, and I still wasn't happy. I still felt some emptiness in my heart, and I, I, I realized I, I better do something to find out the real secret sauce to happiness. Mm. And so I studied all that was out there in the field of positive psychology, and I found that there's a formula for raising your happiness level. And I started doing what the things are that are recommended, and I became happy. And then something really interesting happened that I didn't expect. As I became happier and happier, I started um, really listening to to my own inner wisdom more and more. And I started waking up every morning feeling like my life was miraculous, like I was just in the flow. Life was flowing. The right people were showing up, giving me what I needed. Um, amazing things were happening, and I realized that there's a formula also for living in what I call the miracle zone, which is that place where miracles just, it just feels like you're in the miraculous flow. And so that's what I do these days is help people be in the flow of miracles. So let's define uh, your definition of a miracle. Good, Good place to start with that. So according to Webster's Dictionary, a miracle is a surprise. A welcome event be explained by science and that is often attributed to the divine. Uh-huh. So by that definition, we can't create miracles. They are a gift of the divine, a gift of grace, if you will. But what we can do is we can create the conditions or the circumstances for more miracles to flow into our lives. And that's it's been amazing. What I've seen, that we, I've, I've now had tens of thousands of people uh, have this experience of opening up to what what helps us create the conditions for miracles, and things happen that they've been wanting to happen for five, ten years. Well, I love that. So let's talk about that. Let's talk about the miracle zone, that place where we have to get into so that the, we can actually manifest miracles in our life. What is that place? How do you get there? Well, there are a number of ways, and let me let me give you at least, I'm, I, I know, Ken, you love to be practical, so let's get really practical here. I'm going to give you at least a couple practical ways. One is with our intentions. Everything starts with intention. Um, my, I've had a little formula for, for manifesting for many years, and it has three steps that rhyme. I like it because of the rhymes. It, it, they are intention, attention, and no tension. Everything we want to have happen in our lives it happens best when we set clear intentions. Step number one, step number right. two is right. put your attention on it. Put your loving thoughts, words, feelings, and actions behind it. And then the third step is to let go, to just relax and live in, a, in the energy of trust. 
Hmm. But it all starts with intention. And right now, around now, the beginning of the year, people set their New Year's goals or their New Year's resolutions or their New Year's intentions. And most people set them the wrong way. And that's why only 8% of the people by the end of the year have realized their intentions. And so there's two kinds of intentions. One are what I call ego-based intentions. The other are soul-based intentions. And ego-based intentions make you feel contracted. They're, they're from the ego. And you just don't feel great with them. They're kind of a struggle or a strain. Soul-based intentions make you feel expanded. They're aligned with your soul. And that may sound very abstract, so let's, let's bring that down to earth here. Let me give you an example. You might have an intention to lose 20 pounds. My intention is to lose 20 pounds. And notice how that makes you feel. It probably makes you feel a little contracted because it, it comes with it kind of the energy of, I'm not good enough the way I am, I don't like myself, or I want to lose 20 pounds so that somebody, other people won't judge me, or I want to lose 20 pounds so that to show off to my old boyfriend, or to show off to my old boyfriend's new girlfriend. <laughs> right. So, you know, it's a kind of ego flavor to it. Now, notice, here's a soul-based version of that same intention. The result is the same, but you're coming at it from a different energy. A, soul ba- a soul-based intention would be, I'm fit, vital, and healthy in a body that reflects my radiance. Mm, big difference in, uh, in energy there. Big difference in how I feel when you, when you even say that on the air. I get exactly. that. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. It's, it's just, it's the, the outcome is the same, but you're coming at it from a different angle, and that changes everything. So you're coming at it at a, at a uh, when you say a different angle. As it's it's um, what is that? What's the difference? Because it's like, well, I'm going to lose 20 pounds, right? Because that you know I'm I'm going to as soon as you, I say that, it's like oh that it feels constricted, like you said. But the other yeah, one was it, really soft and easy. I like that. You know, I I really believe that we are um, on on the planet for a reason. That our souls are here for a reason, and when we align with our soul that we actually uh, can manifest in great joy. Mm. And so that ego is saying, I have to do this. I want, you know, I have to look a certain way. I have to, I have to do things to get approval. That's the ego. Mm-hmm. And it may even be, I have to do things to approve of myself. Uh, I, get I get it. I get it. Listen, saying, I got I to take a break. So, but yeah. when I come back... I want to ask you, what are some of the things people can do to live in, in what you frame as the miracle zone? Great. So we're going to talk about that. We'll be right back. We'll be back with more Voices of Courage with Ken D. Foster. Are you feeling stuck or in a holding pattern with your business or life and you're not doing the things you want or love? Then at some point, you're going to be faced with a decision. You'll either choose to keep living in your comfort zone and risk a life of mediocrity or increase your courage, step into your power and forge into the unknown where everything new becomes possible. If you're truly ready to live masterfully, then you need Ken D. Foster's newest book, The Courage to Change Everything, Strategies and Wisdom to Transform Your Life One Day at a Time. This powerful but simple guide provides you with 365 days of life-transforming wisdom, profound questions, and action steps that will increase your strength and open the doors to success. Stop wondering why your business or life isn't working. The answers are available now. Imagine if you had more courage or another chance to start following your dreams. To pick up your copy of The Courage to Change everything visit the courage to change everything.com that's the courage to change everything.com we're back with voices of courage and now your host ken d foster whatever it's Well, today is a very good day to create a miracle in your life. And on the line with me is best-selling author, New York Times best-selling author, Marcy Shymoff. Marcy, what are some of the things people can do to live in the miracle zone? Well, one of the things that they can do is actually um, feel worthy of them. I, and I know this sounds, you know, what do you mean feel worthy? 
the reality is, is that if we don't love ourselves enough, if we don't feel our own essential worthiness, self-love, if you will, not conditional, not because you're a good person or because you look a certain way, but unconditional with the mistakes and all, if we don't feel worthy and self-loving, we block our miracles from showing up. Mm, and it's okay. sub, it's very subconscious. It's not like a conscious thing. And I, I, I'm going to just uh, give you a little quiz and see if you how you do with these. These are some ways that we block in our good that are simple. So when people offer you help, do you feel like you have to help them back, to, give them back twice as much? Mm. Um, when people give you a compliment, do you deflect it? You know, oh, you did a great job. Do you say, oh no, it was nothing. When people give you gifts, do you feel guilty? Do you feel like, oh, I shouldn't, I shouldn't be getting, they shouldn't be giving that to me? When you have a lot of good around you, do you downplay your good because you don't want other people to feel bad around you? You know, do you not, not ask people for help? These are all ways that we're pushing away good. We're pushing away our good. And they may seem very simple, but the reality is when we push our way, our good away in small ways, we're pushing it away in big ways too. Hmm. So what I say is be on the lookout. Notice the next time you start, you, you push away anything that's coming to you and take a deep breath and open up, open up to receiving. Well, I, I love that. And I know that in your, uh, your your uh, workshop, the Year of Miracles workshop that's um, mm-hmm. that you're teaching. One of the keys to being able to stay in that place of being positive, being up, being focused on your consciousness is with group. Um, so, you, can you talk to us a little bit about that workshop that's coming up, and also your emphasis on group? Why is that important? Yeah, so it's been found by by a number of scientists and by uh, Lynn McTaggart has done some fantastic research that's shown that when we are together, the power of eight is some of her research along with the intention experiment. Great book. When we intention for each other, when you've got other people putting their in- attention on your intentions, they happen much more quickly and easily. And so what we do in the Year of Miracles program that you're referring to is we have a huge, we have 3,000 people in the program, and everybody has a a miracles group, six to eight people, and they are basically intentioning each other's miracle intentions. It's similar in many ways to what you and I did um, when we were in our own um, mastermind group. This has a slightly different flavor. This is about really putting your attention on each other's miracles, and it's remarkable how how the energy... um, of support can affect us. Can anybody can anybody get in that group still, or is that is that a close now? It is still available, still open. We just started, and and you, you will be able to get everything. Um, that the, the first session just happened, and you can get it as a replay right away. And it's a, such a powerful program. At the beginning of the year, we have everybody set three miracle intentions from their soul. We walk people through a powerful process, and then. Um, We've, at the end of the year, we asked them how many are, how, how satisfied are you with your miracle intentions that you set at the beginning of the year? 94% satisfaction. Wow, that's amazing. And uh, how did they get a hold of this? Uh, where, where, where do they find this, Marcy? Youryearofmiracles.com. Very simply, youryearofmiracles.com. Let me repeat it to your, Y O U R, year, Y E A R, of O V, miracles.com. Okay. Marcy. Um, our time is going quickly here, so I want to ask you, um, what's been the miracles in your life? Well, the first miracle is that I went from being so unhappy um, as, in, as a child to feeling like my life is truly amazing. I wake up every morning going, oh my God, it's going to be another great day. I, you know, I get to travel the world with I'm um, on the Nobel Women's Initiative group with the Women Nobel Peace Prize winners. It's just phenomenal. So it's it's miracles on a in a big way, but also miracles in a small way. Just the 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 simple things that show up every day, you know, somebody somebody calling me to give me a piece of information that I just was thinking about it. I was thinking, oh I need to know that and the phone rings and somebody tells me. So those synchronicities, I just feel like I living in the flow. That's great. You know, if you had, um, I'm going I'm to go a little deep with you for a second. If you only had, let's say, three days to live, what, what would your mm. message to the world be? 
Uh, my message to the world would be that we are here for a reason, and our reason is to live aligned with that true, the truth of who we are, which is we are miraculous, phenomenal human beings, and that's the purpose of our life, to live from a state of, of love, not fluffy love, but really deeply, truly knowing the love of who we are. Mm, I love that. So I have one more. Do we have another second for me to get yeah, one more little point? Yeah, we do. Go ahead. Yeah. Because, you know, people always ask me, Marcy, is that selfish? You know, what about the rest of the world? Is it selfish to want to be happy yourself or want to have a miraculous life yourself? And my answer is that it's the least selfish thing that you can do. Because when you live a, a happier life, a more miraculous life, you are affecting your family, you're affecting your community, and ultimately you're affecting the world. There's a Chinese proverb that goes like this. It says, when there is light in the soul there will be beauty in the person. When there is beauty in the person, there will be harmony in the house. When there is harmony in the house, there will be order in the nation. And when there is order in the nation, there will be peace in the world. Wow. And so Thank what I would say is let's find the light within our own souls and let's cr- help create peace on the planet. Thank you, Marcy. I hope you'll come back. I really loved that interview. That that was great. You know, we're always interested in what you have to say. Please follow us on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram, or send your questions and comments to viewer at VoicesOfCourage.us. Also, you can find the recording of this show and all our replays on VoicesOfCourage.us. Until next time, live courageously and see the unseeable, know the unknowable, and do the impossible. Thanks for joining us for Voices of Courage with Ken D. Foster. Learn more about Ken, how to be a guest on the show, and sponsorship opportunities by visiting voicesofcourage.us. Be sure to join us next Sunday at 10 a.m. as Ken brings more stories of courage that will inspire greatness within you and change your life for the better. This has been Voices of Courage with Ken D. Foster. (laughs) 